Okay, but we have much bigger fish to fry than anything we just talked about. The tilapia is on the grill and she's starting. And we're fucking so back. We're so back. VPR is good again. Somehow. Praise B. Somehow and they why. pulled it out of their asses and got back to fucking work. And it actually kind of has nothing to do with any cast member on Vanderpump Rules. No. But it has a lot to do with the cast member on the ballet. Jax Taylor, in his five minutes of screen time at the end of VPR this episode, unfortunately, he stole the show. And he reminded us what this show is about, which is terrible people being complete menaces and... To society and each other. And each other and fucking stirring shit up, which is what he did while looking like like a railroad, like a, per, a villain who ties someone to the railroad track. <laughs> Seriously. Wait, also, I just have to say, what? When, ja- when we're in a position as a society and Jax Taylor is like the most clear headed and even keeled of all, the train has left the station. We're officially off the rails. Like, he's sounding extremely level-headed in comparison to everyone else in this universe, and I'm a little shook by that. I think it's because he... I think you take time away from this weird orb of um, delusion. Mm -hmm. It's like unplugging yourself. From the Matrix. Having a moment of seeing yourself. And I'm not saying Jax is, like, well-heeled. I think Jax is probably just doing the same old shit but i think he has some perspective at this point i think once you take some time away from the vpr machine and you come back to it you you just will automatically sound more mature which is yeah true hard to say when it's you're talking about jack's fucking taylor but i'm carrie i'm lara and you're listening to sexy Sexy, unique unique podcast orbs pump heads um, it opens up at everyone's extremely bleak living situations. I just can't I stress enough how I would rather live in a hole in the ground than anywhere that these people are living currently. Joan Schwartz, I'm just at a loss. I'm simply at a loss. They belong together. They do. Tom has like a mask on and Joe comes in. And she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> James is like roaming around his astroturf backyard and he goes, Oh, just got electrocuted by a flower. That's me. <laughs> this is very carry coded. Allie's like, hmm. It's so hot out. I don't even remember what day it was last summer where it was this hot. I just remember like the sick depths of summer. Oof. This crew thrives in the absolute Ugh. summer hell on earth. Guys, you have to Bear with me. I have a little TCU on my, a little cut in my nose. So. I said, we got a bleeder. We got a bleeder. <laughs> We're going down. Um, Tom Sandoval is having a pool party Oof. and his crew is truly, Oof. this is what I'm going to show you what they look got, like. I, th- I thought we had gotten like, as like mind the bowels of LA hell. <laughs> That is a crew that I would rather hang out with. This is like, where do you find these people? I think some of them probably work for him at Schwartz and Sandy's. I think they're some of their employees, honestly. Well, yeah. Israel, former employee of Schwartz and Sandy's, and now an employee at Sir, which is like, Whoa, that. what really? a downgrade. <laughs> There's not many places you can go that are would be worse than Schwartz and Sandy's except for one place in all of LA and that would be sexy unique restaurant yeah yeah they're like they're in the kitchen these random wimp I'm like who the fuck who's is that, that bartender with the orange hair yeah she goes I'm shaking a martini I'm She's shaking, shaking a at booze feeding everyone I was truly like these people are a DNR for me they're literally just like it's dancing with death. With I was like, people. LA's over. LA's so <laughs> fucking over. Um, the de- these people are just like the desperation to be on TV where you would go to a pool party for Tom Sandoval and like. And have hot, fun. And the hottest day of the the year is like 
And of course, Billy Lee is there. Yeah. Which drags. <laughs> Lala and Katie meet for dinner. Well, yeah. Ariana first scurries out while everyone's ripping shots. He go, They go, cheers to a pool, to a great pool party. And then everyone cheers. And you just see Ariana like escape outside. And I'm just like, girl, go get out. Your life is hell. Uh, so Lala and Katie meet for dinner. Mm-hmm. And they have a Hillen moment. Katie apologizes. Lala apologizes. I was like, this feels like a band-aid on like something that that can't last. Katie's tough. She's she's kind she's a she's a cold fish. And I think I think Lala has gotten really I think her sobriety and just like all the things she's been through with Randall, I think she's really She's matured. But she's gotten very soft in a good way. And I think she's asked, she asked Katie, please be softer with me. And Katie's and like, lies, all lies. Katie's like, well, well what do you mean? I'll try. But I'll I can't try. make any promises. I understand. I'll try. <laughs> I will try to be, but I can't give you any guarantees. MJ, no empathy. No empathy. Lies. Lies. They're all no. lies. <laughs> <laughs> the lies, the lies, the lies. But lie, lie, lies. I haven't had a stitch of plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Katie's, Katie's, Katie's literally going fully <laughs> MJ. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I'll try and be, I'll try and be soft with you, slick with you, I'll moonwalk with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she goes, it comes up. And then Lala's basically like, I will try my best to not bring my situation with my ex up so much. Because Katie's basically like, you make everything about you and it's like i'm gonna say something in the grand scheme of things of things <laughs> lala situation is more harrowing yeah than anything these Raquel. fools are dealing with I'm, i i just like i'm and i'm no like no like i understand the devastation ariana felt but like i just think in terms of like but lala didn't win financially no and i think like lala didn't get like as much empathy, I don't think, weirdly. No, she didn't get stands. And it was basically the same thing in a way. But also in a they all They way. both started out as an affair that yeah. became a relationship. Yeah. And then the guy paraded as like a nice guy, a family man, a partner man, and then fucked other people and got found out. And the girl was spurned. But yeah, I think because Lala is more boisterous and empowered and more of like a whore in quotes, the girlies don't they don't ride for Lala like they do. No, and Randall was also like more his was like a whole like Harvey Weinstein kind of situation. Yeah, and it had many a, layers. And there's a baby involved. So it's like It ain't good. So I'm just saying like Katie I'm here for her banking on the send it to Daryl shirt. She needed that. Yeah. She's got to pay legal fees, I'm sure. But Katie going, she's like, it is not the same. Like, it is, you're, you do try to make it all about you. Shut and the then, fuck up. Yeah, and I was like, Katie, shut the, you fucking made it about you and your drama for yeah. years. You involved us in your horrific marriage, your sham of a marriage. So like, I'm just like, shut the fuck up in this moment. And then she goes, and Lala goes, I really am not trying to make it like about me when I'm talking about Ariana. And then Katie act, suddenly goes, it comes off like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just, well, it comes off like that. But she did shock me when she said, I'm sorry. I really am sorry. And I was like, holy shit. I'm sorry. I really am sorry. No Just, empathy. No empathy. She goes, I have empathy. <laughs> I have compassion. And for you, <laughs> I am sorry. And Lala goes, thank you, girl. Thank you, mama. Thank and they, you, mama. Let's hug. They kiss and hug. And then, and then Katie goes, now I'm off to go finger fuck my best now i'm off to manifest sandwiches (laughs) (laughs) she the the fight for sandwiches rages onwards with every passing day will we ever know a time when sandwiches aren't aren't the the only thing she has to live (laughs) she goes i wake up dreaming of baguette she also <laughs> like where is saw we're on saw watch and it what? ain't happening sweetie and i watched the after show which by the way is some of the me. best television that's out there right now Our, Brittany admitted on the after show to having anal sex with jacks 
I don't know. She was just like, she and Lala were talking and Lala was like, I've never done anal. And Brittany goes, you haven't? And she goes, no, have you? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you're sure. a fucking queen for that. And you won my respect, you old bitch. <laughs> anal queen. I knew you had it in you, you big old <laughs> anal queen. I said, I like this that one. Kentucky I home. said, that Kentucky little butthole's gotten <laughs> serviced and I like what I'm hearing. I go, you've got a fan in me now, sister. Let's go. Ain't no queen. I go, here we go. Here we go. But Katie literally is on Sandwich Watch 2024 in that after show. She is there to just have Ariana's back no matter what happens. And just like anyone that Ariana's mad at, Katie Baloney, share. It it comes off like that. The cold cuts. What if she walks in like in like a baguette? She yeah, walks in like in the costume. Sex in the City episode yeah. of Where the Sandwich Man. That is what she's gonna be reduced to. She was a lawyer. She's and gonna he was be a reduced sandwich. to Sandwich on the Street, <laughs> where she literally goes "fuck me" to be. <laughs> hey. She goes. Someone, a lawyer, walks by on the way to the office, and you, they just hear a big old sandwich costumed person go "trade me." <laughs> <laughs> you just hear. Activate me. Trade me. <laughs> what? What? Trade me. Trade me. <laughs> Katie would Katie would be the No, she he walks by and she just hears she she hears as you sauce. <laughs> what? As you sauce. Roast beef. Roast beef. Fuck me on a bed of roast beef. <laughs> trade me. Trade me. And he goes, Excuse me? And she goes, Trade me. But that is her future if she doesn't get her shit together. She needs to get out of Sandwich World now and just like regroup. I know. <laughs> she needs they all, all these people need to read the fuck. They group. need to regroup. Everyone except Ariana needs to regroup right now. Also, Ariana literally didn't tell Katie that she'd gotten according to Lala, Ariana got Chicago and decided to move to New York and didn't tell her partner in sandwiches, Katie, that she was off to Broadway. And I was like, the fact that Katie has not yet regrouped and is still fighting tooth and nail for Chef Penny's hideous sandwiches, has told me everything I need to know. And I'm going to have to send a cease and desist for her. I she needs a cease and desist with sandwich life. I think Ariana's going to stay in New York. Yeah. I think she's going to become a New York girl. And there's going to be a spinoff about like Ariana's life in New York. I'm intrigued. It's like when Whitney Port went to the city. I know. I think, it could, have two, I think it could have two seasons in it and then peter out. She needs to be single, though. Uh, yeah. I will never forget Kelly Catrone on the city going to that skinny model going, Honey, are you okay? <laughs> um, Back at Tom's pool oof. party, I have no words. You have no words for Joe and Schwartz. I have no words for the party <laughs> guests. There's a song by this guy in Lou Miami from the 80s where he, he was like this kind of goth. He was so cool, but... He has like a actually I can't even compare because this is so cool, but he has all his friends in a graveyard just dancing like this mm -hmm. in broad daylight. And I was like, this kind of reminds me of this, except not cool. It's the circus came to town. It is. And it's, gathered in his backyard. It is really weird. And Tom it's is just two color everyone's wearing like too many colors. Billy's sitting with Tom and she's like, This is my girlfriend. She's like, have you met? I think she's trying to like set him up with people. Oh. She's like, have you met my girl Michelle? And like, he's like, no, I invited some girls over. We'll see. And I was like, oh my god, Whomst like who? These, yeah, I Whomst? literally wrote, whoops is everyone? Whoops are these people in the pool other than Billy Lee? And whoops the fuck are these girls that come over because they look like they're seventeen and. They're a little, I'm like, They've got in with their fake IDs to like. <laughs> they also say not a word. Mm -mm. They don't speak. They realize that they made the biggest mistake of their lives coming to this party. And and Lilu Dallas is just like shaking up. <laughs> <laughs> Mila Jovovich in the kitchen is shaking up. She goes, "I've got two drinks." When the girls come in, she goes, "I got two drinks here and a non-alcoholic drink for you, Tom." I'm like, "Oh yeah, he's sober." Yeah, I I'm like, was. Okay, you're on Molly right now, probably. So uncomfortable, these girls coming into the pool being like, we've aligned ourselves with the wrong people. You can see on their faces, they maybe don't even know about BPR. They may just be like Eastern European. They were at See You Next Tuesday, so we met them there and then invited them to the pool party, which is like, that's darkened enough. So maybe they're like, because 
I don't know if they like said a word or spoke English. Did they speak English? I don't know. But he goes, yeah, I live here with my roommate. But <laughs> I, I could see about. like an Eastern European person coming to LA and like staying in West Hollywood and thinking that Sir is like the hottest club in town and like going there, like just going there and yeah. being, it feels very Euros of Hollywood coded. So I could see if they don't speak English or like English is a second language, like how they could end yeah. up in that mix and getting yeah. like sucked into this pool party. That's my fan fiction for them. But you see in real time them being like, cause all the, the, the rando goths are all like looking at them like, who are you? Like, this is our moment. And these girls are just in the pool talking to Sandoval and you see them slowly like be like, oh, we came to the wrong place. He's like squatting and he's flirting with them. and But also not because he's like, I'm here with living my ex. Max, 10 year relationship, no big deal. Trapped her in a room. Sometimes I put potato chips under the door for her. Like joking and I was like, someone needs to pull this man out of the pool and put him in the insane asylum well it's not going to be schwartz because schwartz is like dude i gotta go because like people get mad at me if i'm here for, with you too long i'm like what i was like great you can just friend. say that the vibes are cursed and you don't want to be here I know. but i'm also like great you guys are great friends but also if i were schwartz like because jacks brought this up in the after show where it's like Tom Sandoval basically left Schwartz in a lurch with Schwartz and Sandys when he got in all That's that true. trouble. And I'm like, I would not want to be friends with someone if they just like left me to pick up the pieces of a business that we'd both sunk like our entire life savings into like yeah, a shit restaurant. But I'm also, I'm not going to give Schwartz that much credit because he, I don't think he's, done a lot he's and, just hanging on for dear life yeah i don't think he's like i mean i'm i get what you're saying and i think in any other circumstance i would fully agree with you but with schwartz i'm just kind of like it's not like he's like really working hard no i mean he'd put money in for sure yeah but i don't know yeah fair. Just, i just don't think they're like really good friends no my question is why doesn't tom have a cleaning lady so the next morning Anne is cleaning everything up and Ariana comes downstairs and she's like, are you really, is he really making you do this? And, Ari and Anne's like, yeah. <laughs> and Ariana's like, I love Anne, but I feel really bad that she has him as a boss. Well, also that's kind of her choice. And if you signed up to work for someone who said also part of the job description is that you're going to be a housekeeper, I'd be like, I don't want this job. I'll and work in an, I'll go to an office and work for someone that, I don't clean up after and had an agenda and chose a, this life. So I don't have that much empathy for her, but she also, she was like, I have a podcast. No empathy, in my head. no compassion. Yeah. She's she was getting she, this material. Was, this was material for Anne and her, like her big come she up like a stand up comedian or something. I don't know. I can't, I can't keep up. Is that just Billy Lee? I can't keep up. Well then, okay. I just need but to, like, why don't they have, why don't they have a housekeeper? That's my biggest question. I'm like, he makes her do his laundry. You're making Ew. money. Like, you literally could pay a housekeeper who would actually like, I don't even believe that Anne would do a good job. She's not giving me like good job at cleaning vibes. They could have like a housekeeper that's there every day. Cause the house is, the house is it's big huge. and also you guys are messy. Like Tom Sandoval looks like he's a messy ass bitch. I've seen his closet. Like it's, it's heinous. So like, he just like, why aren't you, you can sign up on an app and just have schedule to have people coming in constantly to clean. They're so, it's so bizarre. Wait, also I just need to talk about like their house is like somehow is like the biggest house I've ever seen. <laughs> he has like, their home gym with like the bisexual lighting and mm -hmm. like Tom, to, you see Tom in the treadmill. He's like, whoo, whoo, five whoo. bedrooms, isn't five. it? And, and Sheena walks in at one point and she goes, Oh my God, I feel so good in here. And like, it's like this weird it's but it's cavernous yeah, but i kind of like it do you like cavernous cave in a house yeah. i mean our my apartment kind of has we have like a you know we have that like tall you can go cave mode we go cave mode and i like that but but i but but it's it looks on it looks uneven in this house. Like the looks, feng shui is off. The feng shui is very off. It's not it's i like a cavernous cozy vibe when it's like chic. I like really 
like my ideal would be tons of natural light, but the ability to go cave mode at my discretion Have with like seen... a blackout blind or something. Totally. Have you ever seen Tony Duquette's house? Mm-mm. Who's that? He was like a set, a really famous set designer of like old, like seven, like Hollywood and like old Hollywood. And he was just amazing gay guy. You have to look at this house. It's like what I want my future home to kind of look like. Less, maybe less audacious than his, but this is the kind of cavernous that I like. I went. It's and he lives in. He's dead now, but it's in Beverly Hills. It looks. It's basically like several different movie sets brought into his house. Oh wow. This, yes, it's jewel ins- tones and it's like insane. Wow, you need to go to the house. You'd love it. Oh my god, he has like molding on the ceilings and just like, like lots of art and like it's like maximalism. Yeah, like this. Like this is the kind of cavernous I like. Like Art Deco. Yes, cavernous maximalism. Like look at this, amazing. Yeah, but there's is but this has like you like a way. moody you like yeah. moody. I like like I don't like like modern farmhouse cavernous LED energy. No, and like it lo- it looks a little methy. It's like Amazon uh, uh, everything, all the decor is from Amazon. Chiaroscuro kind of like lights and dark, but not like that. This lights and dark. I like is a very... moody play with like lights and shadows. Yes. This is giving P and P, and when Sheena walks in and all the all the lights are off, I'm like, "What's happening?" Yeah, I don't like that first the entryway. Sheena goes, "Oh my god, it's so hot outside! <laughs> it's so hot outside!" And her and Ariana sit down for a little one on one, and she, Ariana's like, "Girl, I heard you're mad at me," and Sheena's like, "Well, I wasn't. I was a little upset to he- not hear that from you that you were going on Dancing with the Stars." She goes, was it a punch in the gut? <laughs> Did I have a good cry? Yes. When she heard about Ariana being on DWTS. What I really noticed too in the scene between the two of them is that their vocal fry has somehow increased. Mm. I think I think vocal fr- in, in reality shows, vocal fry increases when people are sitting. Sitting and I think the more famous you get, the more vocal fry you experience to where eventually you just uh, talk, you just open your mouth and go, ah. To Ariana's credit, at least seemingly so, she understands and is like, takes accountability. Yeah. And she's like, girl, I get it. She was like, just had the NDA, you know. (laughs) I was like, honey, didn't stop you from telling old ponytail Dan. I'm just... All of this is so like Hollywood. Very Hollywood. Just Sheena's like, having the Hollywood experience that will shape it. it will shape her and be a real do I stay? It will be a touchstone for the rest of her life in Hollywood. She goes, Honestly, I've been spending way more time with Lala lately. And she's like, Well, I'm also just like so torn because I miss Sandoval, the version of the friend I had for 14 years. And she goes, what if years from now I come to you and say Sandoval has done so much work on himself and he's a completely different person and I'm thinking of being friends with him. And Ariana goes, I'd probably give you a side eye, not because I'm like judging you, but that I'm like, girl, you're in danger. Yeah. And Ariana says Sheena is saying this because she's just laying the groundwork for when eventually she does befriend Tom Sandoval again. And I was like, you're not wrong, but isn't that who Shishu has always kind of been? You know who Shisho is. Also, I heard that they, the streets are saying that Lala and Ariana got into like a screaming match in the reunion and they had to extend the reunion because they just, they like eviscerated each other. They had a friendship ending. Yeah, like they just, they, I heard they just like went the fuck in on each other. I'm here for that. I'm, 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 I'm curious I'm what it for is. That. Yeah. Um, I go, Sheena, why say all this, Chica? There's power in just saying less. And Sheena doesn't yet understand that. Sheena's never understood it. She could still have this in the back of her mind, but you don't need to just say this No, to Ariana. If you want the tea on Chicago, you better zip it up. 
you want the tea on everything that she's doing and you don't want her to say, sorry, there was like an NDA. Like I couldn't tell you. Also like I want to see Chicago. everyone. I know I want to go too. maybe we'll I want to ask her if we can go. Back. Girl, good fucking luck. <laughs> <laughs> you want to uh, you want to. Hey, girl. Hey. hey, it's me. It's me, Carrie. Girl, she, when, I know she likes me. Yeah, but when was the last time you guys talked? On my wedding day. Oh, yeah. Hey, girl, as a year later wedding present, <laughs> want to <laughs> gift me a big old free pass to Chicago? Oh, no, I'm not asking for a free pass. I'm just you asking go to, to backstage? Like, pop in and be like, hey, girl. <laughs> hey, girl, do you still like me? Hey, girl, it's me. <laughs> don't be mad. Don't be mad, girl. But I don't think she's mad. No. No, we... We are very pro her on this podcast, and we have been for years. I'm here to roast whoever needs a good roasting. Well, I need to roast J- Schwartz. I have no allegiances. Schwartz calls Echo Lake Park his secret happy place, and I literally wanted to take a flare gun and shoot myself in the mouth with it, like an annihilation. They literally pile into a clown car to go do their street performance busking. <laughs> 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 They're literally like, <laughs> they're, they're like <laughs> Schwartz is literally like, I love coming here. It's my secret. I'm like, fucking Echo. Wait, this is like a huge. This is like a LA landmark. It's a LA landmark. It's also like disgusting there. It's yeah. like it was like a fucking like. There's like human shit on the ground there. I know. The fuck. And and Joe's they walk like, around. Yeah, I've never been here. He goes. So you went surfing today? How was it? And she goes, so many sharks out there, like crazy. He Not goes, wrong. I know, but he goes, how many bites would it take to get to the center of a Joseph? And she, he goes, one, two, and she goes, three, and then they go, three, 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 three. like they cannot stop themselves with the sound effects. Is she wearing a bathing suit? I don't know. I feel like she's wearing a bathing suit with like board shorts. She's kind of a board short broad. I like that. She's also a bit like mystical crystal, like boho lady. Cause in her, she's very like cross. She's kind of giving mother God energy. She's giving the woman who came up to me. I've told a story at 3 PM at the Abbey and asked if I had any Tina, Mm -hmm. but like looked like a normal kind of normal. And so it truly darked me out so much. That's what Joe is giving me. Even though I don't think Joe does drugs. No, I just think that their clown energy is so off-putting that any sane person would be like, oh, these two are on crystal meth. But really, it's just like they're straight people doing clown comedy. Tom takes his shoes off and puts them on to pedal. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I know it's like you're going to get, but like, do you know you're going to put your bare feet on like. You're just asking for like bacterial. He's so gross. He's so gross. She tells a story about a turtle that I think is fake. Mm-hmm. How she like walked her turtle on a leash and lost it down a sewer drain. And then he became a ninja mutant turtle. <laughs> and he goes, and then, whoop, 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 whoop. And then Schwartz goes, look, there's a turtle right there. <laughs> and then it, she has a talking, she's fully just on the show now. Which I was like, praise be, we needed this. She goes, I have to say, she's like, I'm going to do an astrology reading with Allie. And I have to say, meeting Allie was difficult for me because she's so beautiful. Fair. That's honest. I was like, poor Allie. I know. Allie's being friend trafficked to Joe. This is what you get when you're just like such a tertiary character. I can't. Hang out with Joe. The hell of waking up in a jet stream, jet fuel haze every day. In Burbank. Hearing the constant jets overhead in like an air conditioned tiny house with a dog waiting to fucking kill you at any <laughs> you make one wrong move rip your so- the dog's stomach gonna out rip your esophagus out <laughs> and then the producers call to f- either tr- they're either gonna you know you get a call from a producer and you're like great they're either gonna fucking sex traffic me to some unfuckable weirdo on the show or they're gonna friend traffic me to some unfuckable weirdo on the show and i'm gonna have to say yes for like 5k and then you're like what's up and they're like we are gonna need you to meet up with joe tonight and do an astrology reading on her she's like fuck they're like we're paying you like a thousand dollars for it and she's like i would do it for a thousand yeah 
Joe says the other girls are mean to her, which you brought this on yourself you a bit. This, yeah, you're you. You literally sent Katie a text that was like, "I love you, girl. I you support you. Everything you do is incredible. I'm so here for you, XOXO." And then went and moved in with her ex husband. You started the text off with Bieber loves you. What does she know that we don't? Does Bieber watch Vanderpump Rules? Maybe. There's a contingency of VPR heads that watch and A-list. genuinely love Katie Maloney. Like think that she Rihanna. I needed like a I need like a medical study to be done or like a psychological study because people truly feel this way. And look, Everyone's going to have a different impression of a show. That's why this podcast is so fun because there's many different impressions, many different takes, but like I need a psychological profile from like a medical perspective done on people that watch Vanderpump Rules and genuinely are like Katie Maloney is my number one cast member. I mean, bad girl Riri, who's my ultimate barometer of who's cool like if she thinks they're cool, I'm like they must be. She likes Katie. She follows her. I'm pretty sure. And she this follows was Heather years Gay. ago though. I think people saw Katie and they were like, "Girl, get out." Because she was with San- she was with Schwartz, and I think they all like wanted better for her, and that's so they were supporting her. I'm just curious. She is iconic a little. The hair, she's really serving. No, but she's like, serving more than she ever has, but she's also serving sandwich energy. She has. To me, she's an iconic OG. She is an OG, that's for sure. She fell through a fucking skylight. And survived. She's and lived to tell the tale. I, b- I believe in Katie. Okay. I'm not saying I don't believe I in her. You, I know, I'm not saying you don't either. I'm, I'm just, just like curious. For myself. Mm-hmm. I don't have like really any favorite cast member right now. Like Sheena. I like Joe. <laughs> <laughs> for the chaos. I like Joe too. The crew assembles, speaking of chaos, they go to the Belmont later, which is like, that's you pretty old school, right? We'll have to pry the Belmont from these people's cold, dead hands. The Belmont is like a cockroach. It's on La Cienega, just north of Melrose, in between Melrose and Santa Monica. Oh, is it near like Night Nightingale? Yeah. The, oh. No care. It's that's a like, cursed place where straight people feel oh. they go into their most safe gathering zone is like a well vodka soda at the Belmont. The, that strip of La Cienega is hetero hell. It is. The heteros are called to there. Like they leave their house and they just walk like zombies in the direction of the Belmont. It's literally like a cockroach surviving the apocalypse is like how I view the Belmont. The Belmont. <laughs> the Belmont. <laughs> I've never been in there, but it's how I see Barney's beanery. I tried to make friends with like a straight couple once and they were like, meet us at the Belmont to watch football. And I was like, I can never speak. To you. You're friends with you too many gays. Mm, you can't, you cannot, I can't That's, accept. I, I think you did the right thing. I don't regret it, but I'm like, I do pine for what could have been had they not brought the Belmont into play. I'm so, but don't th- say if, if you're talking to, a woman or a gay man for certain or a bisexual woman or just like a woman of a certain age. Like you Taste. just have to know better than to bring the Belmont. The Belmont has to be your own sick straight secret. The only evil gays that go there are evil gays like Logan and sure as hell we see Logan and not the Logan we love the other Logan. The other Logan. Who's the sinister sinister gay Logan who like wanted to who I think was having a secret relationship with James at one point. Yeah, we've never was, the relationship that cannot be named. But he was at he's posted up at the bar next to Sandoval looking orange as fuck. He's so rules of attraction energy like he, the big, you know, like when they do the reminiscing shots and they like zero in on someone in the background. He's that's like sad. He's sad background rules of attraction movie. Like the girl from War Paint. Yeah, yeah. he's that girl. Yeah, he spurned is. gay. That's posted up at the Belmont. Get out of there, honey. Get out of there. He's watching. Go out to Akbar. Go to Yakbar. No, but this is these are. These I'm are sorry. not. These are WeHo. This is. They don't cross Western. Gays who are on, who only have straight friends, or a majority of their friends are straight. It's a crisis. There's something. There's something not right there. I'm sorry, not to judge. It's true. You need to get your shit together. Tom has 
called everyone a call to arms at the Belmont because he wants to reconnect with his friends. And to everyone's credit, they show up. And Ariana and Katie show up. Scowls Maloney activated. This is why I think this episode worked is because we just need Ariana and Tom in the same space. They don't have to speak to each other. No, and they don't. And that actually makes it more iconic when she's fully ignoring him and he's longingly staring at her from across the room and she can feel his and is acknowledging. It's a power move. That's when I'm like, yes, girl. Yes, girl. Step into your pussy power and strut your stuff into the place and Make him sweat. You don't have to say a damn word. She gagged him. She gagged his ass. He goes, Um, I did not expect her to show up for this. And he looks at her and he goes, interesting. (laughs) Idiot. Shut up. Um, Schwartz goes, Schwartz and Sandy. I also just love like seeing the two of them outcast by everyone. Because you know Schwartz is so uncomfortable with like anyone not liking him or judging him. He's like melting down inside. Well, he's always been the most popular guy. Like he's always been like the fun guy. Like he's always yeah. been the most likable guy. Like I bet he was like Mr. Popular in high school and like Well, also it's like he was so lucky to have a partner like Katie who was tough because he could use her surliness against her to make himself look even better but when he doesn't have a scapegoat to be like you're so crazy and i'm actually cool and normal when in fact like he's fucking manipulative and a psycho himself he doesn't he loses his social cachet the toms use their like and sandoval used ariana to seem more normal Mm -hmm. so they the toms use their former partners to like buttress their brand that they were selling and now they're fucking bucket hat losers and but to everyone's credit they showed up and i was i was happy even lala's there everyone showed the fuck i know i was like poor lala imagine having to be like a sober person with a kid going to the belmont with a shitty ex i know i like love lala me too I love her so much. I like she's a fucking fighter. She's so inc- I just love. She's country strong as hell. Katie and Allie talk, and Allie's like, "I will be hanging out with Joe. I just want to let you know." And Katie literally goes, <laughs> and she goes, "It's giving infiltrating." She keeps saying, "It's giving." I'm like, she like just got on TikTok. Yeah, it's giving infiltrating. I'm like, just say it's she's infiltrating. Can't do it. Sando's like, I really have to poop. I have to poop. He's I'm like, go shit, bitch. Yeah, go shit. God. Jesus Christ. They say that Belmont has the best pooping bathroom in West Hollywood. I respect that. I respect, like... Maybe that's why tea. everyone, all the straight people go there is because they, like, can't poop in front of each other, so they just have to go to the Belmont. Or maybe they all went because when they were doing tons of blow together, they need, it was like a diuretic, and they all had to take shits. Because when you do a lot of coke, you have to poop a lot. Thank God... <laughs> Ariana and Tom are in the same place, though. Sheena goes up. She's like, hey, to to have some serious talks with Schwartz and Sandy at the bar. She basically is like, can you admit any kind of fault? He goes, no. No, Sheena, what do you want me to say? Everything's all my fault. I just hate being a scapegoat. And she's like, you need to. She's like, uh, well, you need to get your shit together. Because (laughs) if you can't admit fault, then, like, you are not going to be accepted back into this group. And then she storms off. And then. James out of nowhere just goes, Tom, get your shit together, man. God, mate. What the fuck? What the fuck are you doing, mate? God. The best moment was James coming out of the shadows in like a shadowy dark area of the Belmont going, Tom, get it together, mate. Fuck you, mate. And so I'm going, oh, man. But James is like, Tom should be grateful that James, James is like genuinely like wants Tom to like, be back fuck him <laughs> yeah i think really at the end of the day it's that but he I, wants to be bred he wants to be bred by sandy <laughs> tom sandoval and james should get together that would be iconic if there was like an eventual just like well gay twi- if they went gay all you have to do truly to get a little gay all you have to do <laughs> to get back in everyone's good graces is say you're gonna kill yourself and don't and then go gay and everyone will be like, work. <laughs> that truly is all. If you ever find yourself in a real pickle and everyone hates you. Come just out be, as queer. You need to first be like, 
if you don't stop, I'm going to kill myself. And then it'll shut everyone up. Then in the week long that they're all worried about you, you just have to come out as queer. <laughs> go as gay as you possibly can. If you're gay, go even gayer or go by. James is like, please breed me, mate. Breed me. And I then, want you to breed me. And then Tom, Santa fuck like, you, breed me. <laughs> fuck you, mate, and fuck my hole. And then Santa was like, man, no. And then Logan comes out of nowhere. Evil Logan comes out of nowhere and goes, you can, just bends over. He goes, you can breed me. And then <laughs> James is like, get out of here, mate. I'm not gay, you fucking. No one's ever bred with you. Certainly not me. <laughs> I've never did. I've never <laughs> breeding puff. You fucking puff. Get out of here, fairy. You fucking fruit bag. You won't be breeding this hole. <laughs> this hole isn't yours. It's for Sand- It's for not Sandoval. I've never been bred. I don't but even like gays. I don't even like gays. But I want to be bred. <laughs> and then... The next day, the scene kind of was a blot of me, but Sheena and Brock argue again about <laughs> Sheena's... No, I'm not interested. I'm like, okay. And then I don't even think it's, like, real arguing. I think they just, like, need a storyline, so I'm... And I'm choosing to believe that their relationship is functional, and if it comes out later that it's not and he's a really bad guy, I'm just gonna hedge right now and be like, don't at me. Then we cut to Sandoval on the back on the treadmill, and he's breathing so heavily. <laughs> <laughs> and it's making... <gasps> But I also was like, what is this workout regime? Because I need to... I w- he's looking 0% body fat vibes. He's looking statue of the gods. I think his workout is... He's looking ripped as hell. His workout is no eat. No eat and MDMA and working out. And sa- depression. Yeah. And that can be a very, very good workout. But he's walking on an incline with like hand weights. And I was like, okay, I'm, no- I'm looking at those yeah. arms being like, maybe this is my key to like madonna arms in 20 2024 i was doing that for a minute i love that um katie comes over katie and ariana are in gather mode because ariana is now gonna have her sexy party tonight tom's on the treadmill and she he texts Anne to text ariana that i'm like this is insane you're crazy for this imagine paying someone to text someone that's downstairs that he's coming down to make his like fart protein smoothie and ariana's like do you mind to katie do you mind if i go do my makeup alone while you wait down here and katie's like sure i'm getting paid and then (laughs) tom comes down and he's like katie looks at the producer and they go five hundo and she goes okay sure and she goes yeah that's fine and then tom comes downstairs and he goes hey he goes hey looking good katie he goes hey what's up just here to make my protein shake uh no no empathy no no compassion by the way um i just want to say like i'm really sorry for like what i said about you and schwartz for to to her credit katie makes a great statement here she She basically said for once in her damn life she's like she basically is like you keep over explaining how sorry you are and like she's like you need to put these actions into words if you want us to like understand that you actually are sorry you have to actually appear sorry and not just say you're sorry she says it's just words she says it's just words it's not <laughs> empathy she goes what you did was fathomless it was like Ooh. and he goes he goes fathomless like you can't even fathom it unfathomable got incredibly defensive right off the bat when someone apologizes to you and then you like immediately immediately the thing about apology is like if someone's truly sorry, they apologize and then understand like a conversation is going to occur and there's going to be like some back and forth like to get to a place of understanding. But if you apologize or someone apologizes and then immediately gets defensive, it negates the entire apology because the apology wasn't real. You're not really sorry because you're mad. He goes fat. At first I was like, is he correcting cuz that's not a word? No, he was just like you can't even fathom what I, I was did. Like, oh, you Fucking asshole. You Katie fucking dick. Reads him to Phil. She goes, it's giving audacity. She goes, it's giving audacity. I'm like, oh my God, Katie. Katie. You, you had me, girl, and now you lost me. Again. Just make friends with a goddamn dictionary. Yeah. Just, there's apps on your phone that's one word a day. It is giving audacity. It's giving audacity. <laughs> so there's this she audacity. Queen. She goes, Queen, I will not be showing you any grace. I shan't be showing you grace today, Queen. It's giving audacity. She goes, so there's this audacity. <laughs> it's giving audacity. He goes, show me, a, show me a shred of grace. Bitch. And she goes, no. She's showing you it right now. She goes, no, I've got sandwiches to me. No, cold cuts. She goes, so there's this cold cut. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, no. 
So there's a salami. <laughs> and he goes, all right, well, see you later, Katie. He goes, by the way, you look really good. He oh. goes, you look good. Shut <laughs> the fuck up. You fucking smell. Imagine how it. stinky he is in that moment. I bet he's stinky. I bet it kind of smells good. Though. Ew, I don't like stink. Not even a little bit of armpit? like a little bit of, of musk. I don't like guy. a disgusting. I, no, don't but like I, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good stinky. I think it's like. You don't. Well, you don't know until you sniff. That's the thing. I want to go sniff. I'd be like. <laughs> I want to go sniff <laughs> his room. Ew, I, no. I have to. His, you know, his room is <laughs> filthy. No, his room his, his is sheets smell sick. like. Sick. His <laughs> sheets smell like. um His room. Salsa. <laughs> you, know when you, you know when someone's sheets haven't been washed in, and you know they haven't been washed in a while and they smell like salsa. You know what I'm talking about. I know. And I bet that's what his room smells like. <laughs> I would go in. I, I'll be the sniff inspector and I go in and I go. I go. You go first. first, <laughs> first. This is like MTV when they had sent like the person in with room the black raiders? light room raiders. Yeah. But it's just <laughs> it's room raiders rebooted as like very, very gay. And you go first things first, a sniff inspection. And you just start sniffing around. <laughs> I The nose knows and I have a good <laughs> nose. It's called the nose nose. It's <laughs> just me and my big fucking Room nose. Roommate the nose nose. And it's just me. I can first tell you a lot first, about someone. A blind sniff test. No, I'm really. I'm my our apartment is constantly. I'm. Uh, You're sniffing good things out. No, and uh, like, I'm so. <laughs> don't I always smell good? Yeah, you smell great. It's there's a reason. It's because <laughs> I know it. I am very sensitive to smell. And I will go into that room, and if it smells like, I will know for a second that it's a straight guy's room because you know. You know I think his room it. smells like yeasty. <gasps> <gasps> you know what a guy's room smells like? It's like this damp, like sweat. Oh my god! Don't. Like, it kind of is sweet. It's like a sweet sort of like ripe. It's fucking ripe. Ugh. And I know Tom's his shoes probably smell. He needs to just get a good zhuzhing in that room, and I would go in and go. Not up to par with my. <laughs> you go. It is not giving. It gets one out of five sniffs. It's giving. It's giving. <laughs> it's sniff. one out of five noses. It's giving one out of five. <laughs> and then you do the black light test. I won't even go that far. It's, it's just, just sniff. It's just sniff. And you go. This has got to go. No, I'm like I know, and you know, Anne. God damn. God bless Anne, because she probably has to go into that. No, you're crazy for that. You're crazy to subject yourself. To Sandoval's dirty yeast sheets <laughs> in order to just get a little screen time to promote your podcast. You could not catch me doing a man's laundry and cleaning up his cum rags. <laughs> Tom also is so weird when he doesn't get his way. Like when things... He when he thinks something's gonna happen and it doesn't happen, he becomes truly golem. And you know what, Tom Sandoval used Schwartz to make himself look better too. Mm -hmm. He was like the messy one, and Tom Sandoval had his shit together. And then we realized, no, you're just a yeasty. You're, you're just, just a, a yeasty sweet. You yeast. under the sheets smell like a dank pea. A loaf is cooking. Oof. Don't tell Maloney. <laughs> Not the good load. And then he, she go, he goes, you look really good. And she goes, okay. And then. <laughs> <laughs> then and he then goes Tom to journal. And you know, he's journaling. What kind of Unabomber fucking. I think he just writes like observation. He's like, the walls are white. The <laughs> lamp is yellow. Raquel won't talk to me. It's giving. Cameras. I'm being filmed. <laughs> like, it's just like. A stream of consciousness, like surface level. They need to publish those journals one day. He should publish. I'd buy it. Then, yeah, Schwartz comes over and is like, "What's wrong, man?" And, and he then goes, he's like, "Everything." And he he takes out a plastic Ziploc bag with film <laughs> pictures of him and Raquel, but Raquel's face is blurred out. But there were like that haunted me. There were like who took secret photos of them? Was I bet it was Joe or Schwartz? Probably. Probably it was Joe. There's like photos of Raquel and Tom like being a couple in photos together. And it was clearly they were taken during the affair. And Tom's tr and Sandoval goes, you miss her so much, man. He's like, God, look how happy we were in these. And you used to see her in like a, one of those giant hoodies. Oh, and again, it, the, the like 
his room is in a place of true disgusting crisis and then he goes into his closet and weeps and i was like not crying in the closet but not crying in the closet while your best friend sits in like a chair covered in laundry just beholding your meltdown Mm -hmm. also schwartz is so uncomfortable with like human emotion he starts crying and he's like, everyone thinks I'm like Scott Peterson. And then Schwartz <laughs> goes, didn't he kill his wife? And he goes, allegedly. And I was like, oh my God. Schwartz is like, dude, I really think like you're at the tail end of this, which I was like, he's not. the most people pleaser thing to say is someone that's truly in the middle of the crisis of their lives being like, you're at the tail end of this. I'm like, honey, this is, it's three months in, but I this also- is just beginning. <laughs> and then goes, dude, no, I'm not. <laughs> he goes, I- everyone's looking at me and treating me like I'm Scott Peterson. That shit followed Scott Peterson around for the rest of his life. And this is going to follow me. And I was He's- like, okay, you're starting to get it. Yeah. Scott Peterson's on death row. Allegedly. There's a lot of people think saying there's new evidence that, did you see that? No, we got to, we'll check in with Nancy. Okay. Are we running over time? No, we're good. Okay. Um, then Ariana has her crew over. Logan's there. They play Never Have I Ever. And Sheena pops the fuck off. They say, Never Have I Ever Been in a Threesome with Two Guys and Brock raises his hand. Brock drinks. And, and everyone's like, like, Brock? And James is like, Brock! Brock, my breed me! No. Fucking breed my hole! <laughs> and Brock says that he was in a foursome with a girl with her two guys i don't know he says there were four people in the room when he was fucking he he goes in but then he walks it back but i was like brock it's fine if you fucking got spit roasted by two guys or i think he was just fucking a girl while there were gay guys two gay guys fucking maybe either way and he clarified on the after show they're like james was like when was that and he's like, my San Diego dies. San and I Diego was like, is, San Diego is like a real swinger place. Mm-hmm. And then Sheena goes, I've been in an orgy <laughs> with a famous person. And everyone goes, who? And she goes, let's just say my body's a wonderland. She and I goes, was like, it was an A-list celeb. Let's just say my body was a wonderland. So I was like, you were in an orgy with John Mayer? Yeah, she said it, it was three girls and John. In 2008. She won. Sheena needs to write a book for, about her whore years. From 2006 to 2008, Sheena was fucking and sucking her way through Hollywood. And she, I want to know more. She won that contest that night. She really did. She gagged everyone. And I'm glad that she's bringing it back to a place of mayor. We needed this. I know. Allie and Joe do their astrology. I kind of fast forwarded through this scene. I got to be honest with you. Yeah. Joe gets a reading. Allie tells her she like reads a part of her chart and she's like, oh yeah, like this is where Libra energy shows up in your chart with like Tom Schwartz. And now seeing this, like I definitely do think it's just a friendship bond. And Joe goes, yeah, (laughs) she goes, but you never know. Like sometimes friendships, I see that with people who are married because like you're, you're friends and anything could happen. Joe goes, and then we cut to boys night at Tom. Well, Tom. No, then we first we cut to Katie's comment about Joe again, about her being spooky. And then <laughs> I'm still not over. I will. I will set her on fire. I will light her with a flame Ra- with Raquel. Jesus fucking Christ. Joe goes, well, it's thank you for meeting with me because none of the girls like me. And it's really been hard to be called a crackhead whore because my mom called me to ask me if I was on crack. And I was like, her mom probably read that and was like, oh, my God, that explains it. (laughs) (laughs) But I just will never get over. And everyone kind of glossed over that. But I will set her on fire along with Raquel. Everyone was just like letting. They don't want to step to Maloney when she. Go off, queen. Uh, But then Maloney found sandwiches and she seemed to be like cured of her homicidal her arson <laughs> no they were like she needs the flame of an oven to light bread they have told her you can set things on fire in a sandwich shop I we'll give s- you an oven and you can set bread on fire i will set her on fire um fucking jacks meets the boys at dinner and it was all we needed jack sits down 
<sighs> Schwartz has invited him, but also this is serving as the crossover to get us into the valley. But Jack sits down and just lights Sandoval up. And he goes, dude, he goes, you look a lot better. You look a lot better. Because I saw a picture of you on social media recently and you look 50. <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> and he goes, I'm opening up my new place. And, and they go, oh, is that right? And he's like, yeah, I'm opening up. It's called Jack's. And James goes, Jack's Tavern. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, well, you should talk to uh, Schwartz and Sandy here. Cause, and then he goes, no offense, but you and Schwartz are the last people I want to ask for restaurant advice. And they're both like. And Sandoval just goes, fucking Jax. And then Jax goes, you are literally, you're literally a disgrace. <laughs> and Tom is just brooding. But then Jax is like, look, I love you. Like he goes, that's why, you know, that's why I got this tattoo. And then I forgot that he has a tattoo on his forearm that says Tom, Tom, and I. Incredible. <laughs> Bless no, you. Incredible. No work. one gets no one gets to Sandoval like Jax. And to let him, he just has free reign to roast, and it is a magical thing. Jax looks like Stacy Keach. <laughs> I don't even know who that is, but I'm here for it. He does. Um he goes. He goes, humble yourself, humble yourself, humble yourself. <laughs> I was like, fuck yes. This is he what goes, he needs. You're me. You're me seven years ago. He goes, I've been through it, but now you're through it, and it's way worse. Everyone hates you. The whole world talks about it's you. Like the, the whole, whole world, world hates talking you. about you. And Santa was like, I know, dude. Fuck. <laughs> God, dude. Let, let Get off my neck, man. And then Jax is like, man, you know, like now that I'm out, and I've had like a few years out of the, the clink of banner bump rules. Things have been put into perspective. And like I'm more mature and I, I've grown a lot as a man. We'll see. And he goes, that's why I'm heading over to the valley. And then walks out and gets in an SUV. And then we are literally in the valley. <laughs> so stay tuned. Stay tuned. Because tomorrow we're recapping the valley. We are. So consider this the crossover event of the century. Consider this your two weeks notice. <sighs> Let's talk about the cult members. We are going to shout them out. Makeup Fresh. Makeup Fresh. Denise Jeanette, Denise Bruce. Jeanette Bruce. Rachel in Dublin. Rachel in Dublin. Gina Sapienza. Gina Sapienza. Sarah Elizabeth. Sarah Elizabeth. Lucy from London. Lucy from London. Brooke Johansson. Brooke from Johansson. Rachel Knight. Rachel Knight. Brittany Ryan. Breed me. Breed me. <laughs> Danielle McMillan. Danielle McMillan. Bridget Wisowski. Bridget Wisowski. Lady Swamp Witch gives, gives no, no fucks. fucks. Jessica Hernandez. Jessica Hernandez. Lazara. Lazara. Mazatov. Mazatov. Mary. Mary. Mike Earhart. Mike Earhart. Sharon Baum. Realtor. Earhart. Realtor. Timothy Shield. Timothy G. Summer Moon Honey Jesus. Davies. Jesus. Matthew Thomas. Jesus. Owsley Robinson. Owsley Robinson. Mariah Kay. Mariah Kay. Kathy. Kathy. What's her last name? West. Michelle Martino, Michelle Martino, Kit Moore, Kit Moore, Hillary, Hillary, Orlando, Orlando patron of the patron farts, farts. Nick Sedaris, Nick Sedaris Emily, Emily, Kim Lucas, Kim Lucas, RJ, Je RJ Jeffrey, proud of my, proud of my, proud of my. Guys, we love you. Thank you for continuing for your extra, extra special patronage to all of our patrons and even to our free listeners. We love all of you. We love all of you. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you tomorrow for our big old Valley recap. Bye. Bye. <laughs>